Welcome to the last section of this course, Building a REST Client in Spring Security. Now let's move on to the video, Building a REST Client in Error Handling. So far we have created a REST API and consumed it in third-party tools such as SOAP UI, Postman, or JUnit Testing. There might be situations where you will have to consume a REST API using the regular method itself, like Payment API Call in Service API. It will be useful when you call a third-party API such as PayPal or a Weather API in your code. In such situations, having a REST client will be helpful for getting the job done. Here we will talk about how to build a REST client to consume another REST API in our method. Before moving on to that, we will talk a little bit about REST template in Spring. So let's start with the REST template. REST template is a Spring class that is used to consume the REST API from the client side through HTTP. By default, the REST template class relies on JDK to establish HTTP connections. You can switch to using a different HTTP library such as Apache HTTP, Components and Netty. Now let's do some practical stuff. As you can see, I have already imported the ticket management folder in the Eclipse IDE. It contains the necessary code files for this video. When you expand the ticket management folder, you will see many files and folders. Again, expand the SRC main Java folder and these are the packages under this folder. Note that this ticket management folder is available inside the section 6 folder in the code bundle we have provided. All these packages contain the necessary Java files that you can see here. In the SRC test Java folder, you have the com.packedpub.restapps ticket management and it contains the files as seen highlighted. Now open the appconfig.java file. Here you will see that first we have added a REST template bean configuration in the appconfig class. In this code, we will see how the REST template bean can be configured. Here we have mentioned this class with at configuration annotation to configure all the beans inside the class. We have also introduced the REST template bean in this class. By configuring the bean in the app config class, we tell the application that the mentioned bean can be used in any place in the application. When the application starts, it is automatically initializing the bean and is ready to use the template wherever needed. Next, open the com.packedpub.restapp package. Inside that, clientcontroller.java. We can use REST template by simply using the auto wired annotation in any class. For a better understanding, we have created a new class called clientcontroller and added a simple method in the class. In this code, we have used REST template and called the getForObject method to consume the API. By default, we use string.class to keep our code simple to understand. To take a look at the result in the browser, first we need to run the application. You can see that our application is up and running. Once it is running, when you call this API, you will get the result is shown highlighted on the screen. In this process, we have used the REST template inside another REST API. In a real-time scenario, you might use the same method that you use to call the third-party REST API. Let's get a single user API inside another method. Let's get the single user API inside another method. And it can be done using this code as shown highlighted. By calling this API, you will get the single user as a result. In order to call this API, our user class should be serialized. Otherwise, you might get an unserialized object error. Let's make our user class serialized by implementing serializable and adding a serial version ID. Now we will open the user.java file. After serializing the user class, it will look like this as shown highlighted. And here is the serial version ID. Finally, we can call this client API in the browser, and we will get the result as shown highlighted. We have used only the get method for ease of understanding. However, we can use the post method and add parameters in the REST consumer. Post that, we will move on to the next topic, error handling. Here we will discuss how to manage errors and display them in JSON format when things go wrong. Let's create a common error handler class to manage all of our errors. So open the error handler.java file. So we have created a common error handler class with the help of these lines of code. In this error handler class, we have created a single method called handle exception with the exception handler annotation. This annotation will make the method receive all exceptions in the application. Once we get exceptions, we can manage what to do based on the type of exception. Once we have finished the error handler, we will have to use it in our application. Applying the error handler can be done in many ways. 
extending the error handler is the simplest way to use it. So open the home controller.java file. In this highlighted block of code, we just extended error handler in the home controller class. By doing so, we are binding all error scenarios to error handler to receive and handle property. Also, we have created a test method called test error to check our error handler. In order to call this API, we need to pass item as a parameter. Otherwise, it will throw an error in the application. As we have already defined the error controller class and extended the home controller class, missing the parameter will take you to the first scenario mentioned earlier. Just try this URL in your browser or any REST client. After you try this endpoint, you will get the result similar to the one shown highlighted here. As we have defined the JSON format in our error handler, if any REST API throws an exception, we will get the error in JSON format. Now we will learn about the customized exception. So far, we have only explored application thrown errors. However, we can define our own errors and throw them if needed. This code will show you how to create a customized error and throw it in our application. In this code, we created a custom exception by using the runtime exception. This is just test code to show you how a customized exception works in error handling. Make sure that your application is up and running before calling the API. If you call the URL shown highlighted on the screen, which is an API, you will get an error like the one that is highlighted here, which is caused by our condition match. So here we have come to the end of this video.